just when we think that you cannot come up with something even more amazing <laughs> to see your talents, did you always want to be a remaster? How excited are you? I, you know, I always loved the circus. I, uh, and when I found out the Big Apple Circus has doesn't have the animals anymore. They've just got domestic animals, the horses and the kittens. I said, okay, I want to do this. I, I love the whole philosophy, you know, sticking with the animals. The horses that I was riding today are used as therapy animals and they're all rescued. So it's really a beautiful circus, you know, and you can see how much the, the horse loves uh, his trainer. And um, so I'm just thrilled to be a part of this. It's really exciting. Yes, I, I, I'm thrilled to be the ringmaster, the guest ringmaster at the Big Apple Circus. You just came back from this injury. What are your secrets? How are you staying in shape? What are you able to do to stay in this ringmaster shape? Oh, thank you. Well, I, you know, it hasn't been easy because, you know, when you can't get on the ground and do push-ups or, uh, you know, just like having the arm in the in the cast was disorienting. So I, I and then of course there were the holidays. So I did put on a little weight, and um, but I just I, I've sort of made a vow this new year to get back to where I just feel great. You know, I just want to, I feel better when I exercise every day. And um, I work with a physical therapist right now to try and get everything strong again. My attitude is until I feel like I am completely independent and that I can do, you know, whatever I want to do on my own, I'm just going to keep working and building my strength back. And I have to ask you, I thought of you actually many times this week. I remember 25 years ago when you had your own helicopter incident, such that terrible accident. Today, we're all mourning and reeling the loss of Kobe. That must have been especially something that brought you back to what happened. What was it like for you when you heard of what happened? You know, I got a call from my daughter, Sailor, and I think she called because she, she knows I'm sensitive to helicopter things. And uh, as soon as she said it, though, I spontaneously burst into tears because I grew up in a Lakers house. My parents had season tickets. Um, we, you know, my parents never missed a game, ever. And my mom adored Kobe. And he made her feel like a million bucks. Like she just always repeated how kind he was, how warm he was. And so, you know, as a result, I loved him also for everything that he is, but also for the way he treated my mom. And then on the, then the next thing that hit me was, oh, oh my God, a helicopter. I mean, you know, um, I, I don't know the details of what happened. Um, I just know that, I know that my last thought was I just wanted everybody that I know to know. I wanted my, especially my daughter Alexa, wanted her to know how much I love her. And I really think it really, it crystallized what really, when you really think you're about to die, it's about love. It all boils down to love. You just want everybody to know how much you love them. And I think that's the one thing that we can say, that we can count our blessings for Kobe and his family, is that everybody he touched knew how much he loved them. And so I think that, you know, that's a, that's a really great man there. Thank you for watching. If you want more extra, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll never miss a video.